Hello loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to switch it up and do a romantic love pick a card reading. One of my subscribers and someone of the Bihati Vibe Tribe asked me so sweetly down in the comments, Jess, can you do a pick a card reading um, focusing on love? When is the next time you're going to do it? And it was just so sweet and so open with me that I it was a definite yes. I put it on my list of to do. So I have poured four different piles for you to choose from. Go ahead and take the time that it is that you need in order to pick the pile that you are most drawn to or maybe more than one. I found myself drawn to more than one. I'm not going to tell you which one that is but um, yeah so and then feel free to comment it down below if you would like to and then also how this reading resonates the timestamps for each of the messages will be also pinned down in the comments and also found in the description box and I will go ahead and dive into your message so for those of you guys that chose pile number one I have not seen these cards yet. Um, I'm seeing them for the first time. So the first card that you chose is Bronwyn, and this is the card of forgiveness ruled by the number seven in this deck. And the first thing that I'm getting as I'm looking at this card and as I'm feeling the energy of this pile is um, hesitancy. It feels, I'm almost hearing like an energy of, you know, this doesn't really feel fair or you're asking a lot of me right now. And I'm also getting a sense that spirit acknowledges this. I'm also getting a sense that it's a level of vulnerability that you're stepping into in your life right now that makes you more uncomfortable than anything. Um, I feel like for some of you guys, you're wondering, you know, did I do something wrong? Um, let me go ahead and put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Did I do something wrong? Um, am I ready for this? There's a space of hesitancy, like a really strong space of hesitancy, and I'm not entirely sure why forgiveness is there for you yet, again, because these readings are so general. I'm also feeling as though there's something that needs to be said or something that you need to hear. Um, of course, with the word forgiveness, it could be an apology. It could be something that you are seeking. That's what I just came through is something that is that you're seeking. Or it could be an understanding of something. You're that's probably why it doesn't feel fair. Maybe you were been you've been dealt um a you know a, a hand. I don't know if that's the right word, but if your circumstances have been dealt in a way that has felt um poor, poor to you or unfairly to you, that now you're like I kind of want more, but at the same time, you're hesitant to accept more. If you're in a relationship, this could be you having a hard time opening up and showing the world who you are, showing your partner who you are, or you may have needs that need to be met that are gone, that are being um, overseen, meaning like someone's not seeing it, they're not observing it, but I also feel like it's your responsibility um, to, to speak it out or maybe you have put it out there and you feel like it's not being heard. The other thing is that if you're, um, well, another thing that I'm getting is that maybe if you're single, you may feel as though the universe is overlooking you or you're putting out intentions, you're speaking intentions. I feel like you're not speaking your intentions strongly. I feel as though it might be cloudy as far as what is it you're putting out there or maybe what you're doing and how you're acting and how you're moving in the world combats and competes with the intention that is that you put out there for yourself. And I don't know, those are just some things that I'm coming from that I'm picking up from immediately from this from this card. I'm getting a sense that you really are being called right now to move from your heart space. And that is really terrifying for some people because that means that you're going to have to be more vulnerable now than you ever have been. You're in a space in your life where you have to be very vulnerable. Maybe you've been vulnerable with a partner before and it didn't work out or maybe you got hurt or whatever the case is. So now it seems unfair, but I don't even know if it's unfair. It just feels very nerve wracking for you to open yourself up again. But Spirit is saying, whatever your circumstances it is, whatever it was that draw, 
would, was pulling you to pick this pile, no matter what it is, really move from this higher space from your heart. Um, fear, fear creates more blockages than anything, and love conquers all. So spirit is really encouraging you right now in this moment to be very vulnerable and risk being vulnerable in order to gain everything. So that's what it is I'm getting <laughs> from that card. That's a lot. That's a lot. So let me put this here at the center. Next three cards, or next few cards we have, are three of wands and two of wands. This is very interesting because for those of you guys that picked this pile, I'm really getting a sense that things are starting to take off. You're really going to start seeing signs of things manifesting or things moving forward. Um, I feel like you've been, this is something you've been setting intention for. This is something that you've been putting your energy towards. Um, this is really standing out to me. This crystal that she's protecting, that she's holding on to, this orb. I feel like that's, the word that's been coming through a lot lately is prophecy, but this also feels like a prophecy from the heart. Let me go ahead and put these cards out so that I can see them to help give me better. Okay, so the next card that we have is You Deserve Love. We also have the card Invisible. We have New Idea. I'm going to put this here. We have Reach for the Stars. We have Calmness. We have spaciousness, service, and sanctuary. So this is t exactly, this really confirms what it was that I was feeling and sensing from the very jump, which is you're really being placed in a, in a, in a spot in your life right now where there's new energy, new life, new love, new romance, or deepening the connection so that it feels kind of new, but it requires a certain level of vulnerability. Um, number one, with the sanctuary card, here, I feel as though spirit is clearly telling you that although you may feel scared, although you may feel vulnerable, although you're waiting for the, the other shoe to drop, so to speak, and you're waiting for these things to fall apart and to fail, the reality is, is that you really have been setting intention and putting it out there to the universe, to spirit, and spirit says, I heard you, I heard your prayers, I heard your intention, and I'm responding to it now by honoring what it is that you have put out there from what it is that you have set intention to to, to manifest and for you to secure within your life. Now that it's happening, you there's a space of fear. There's a space of conf conflicted energy. Am I safe? Is this truly, am I ready for this? Is this truly the right thing? Is this truly the right person? Am I doing things the right way? And I feel like that's where this forgiveness card is coming through. Why this card was um, what came to you is the fact that no one is expecting you to be perfect. Spirit says, we're not expecting you to be perfect. We're expecting you to be authentic and vulnerable. And that requires you move from a space of your heart. If you, you're going to find out and discover more things about yourself through loving another person, through, um, being, like demonstrating that love. And you're going to learn a lot about that person. Even if you guys have been together for 15 years or if this is a brand new idea or a new relationship that's entering your life, you should understand that you are going to be learning about each other and constantly learning about each other. So there has to be this space of forgiveness and also space, spaciousness. That was your other card that came through. And this card says, what do I no longer need Help me, God, to release whatever people, places, or things drain my vital essence. Show me what will fill me with enthusiasm and joy. And I love that because it says, help me to release whatever people, places, or things drain me of my vital essence. Your vital essence is blood, and blood gets pumped throughout the body from the heart. And so if you are in this space of brokenheartedness and you're not forgiving certain things that you have done or other people have done, that that that, that, that vital energy that love, that blood, is what is being pumped throughout all of your body and it locks you up. Um, there is a space in your life, for those of you guys that chose this card, where it felt like you were not seen, that you were invisible, that, and for some, for many of you, that was for your own protection at the time. But now you're really being called to speak up. You're really being called to put it out there. You're really being called to have a space of calmness Literally, that was the card that is I pulled for you. Even the hummingbird, it's about, you know, being your unique self and allowing people 
allow yourself to be drawn to the right things and allowing the right things to be drawn to you and that you are in a safe space. You're in this sanctuary so that you can speak up, so that you can articulate your needs, so that you can tell someone that you love them, so that you can ask for what it is that you need. And you have to allow you know, the disappointments of the past to fall, to shed, so that you can move from your throat chakra, you can move from your heart chakra. The other thing that I'm seeing here is service. I feel like when I see this card, I'm getting a sense that relationships for you have been so much of what you're doing for them, or flip it, it could be so much of what they're doing for you. And I'm getting the sense of we want to really relax that, we want to ease that up. And we want you to be in a space where it's just you just entering into, okay, it's not about what I have to do, 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 do in order to attain this love. Let's say you're single right now. Your intention has already been put out there. What if I told you that it is going to come back to you and you don't have to do anything right now other than just be who you are, be your unique self. The, the hummingbird is really standing out to me, you guys, out of all of this. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there's no animals. There's no other animals that are shown in this outside of the moth, but I don't see that as significant. The hummingbird, the hummingbird animal totem is something that's really standing out to me. And one thing that I'm seeing from the hummingbird is nectar, nectar of life, sweetness, attraction, vulnerability, compassion, playfulness, speed. All of these things are coming towards you and all these things are radiating from you. So when you put it out there, just speak from love, speak from your unique perspective, show who you are. When you do that, people embrace it, they love it. And I'm also seeing you guys giving to yourself um, the things that is that you need so that you can be seen, so that you can be heard, so that you can be appreciated. The next thing that I saw for you, and the last card that, I'll, is that I'll mention is reach for the stars. You deserve only the best, see? And this is all you should focus your attention on, your intention and your attention. That's what's saying you deserve love. This spirit is really saying that you've been in a space where you've been so, like you've been trying to secure love or trying to create the right relationship or trying to perfect yourself or trying to get ready. And I feel as though spirit is saying that the only thing that you need to do right now is be open to receiving. And when you receive, speak. When say, Speak your truth. Speak from your heart. Um, be compassionate. Be colorful. Be playful because that's where you're at right now at, at your journey when it comes to love. I do see for this for this pile a new, a new love. And if you're in a relationship, I'm seeing new connection in this relationship. Okay? All right. So those are, that's for those who picked group number one. I'm going to move on to group number two. Okay, so for those that chose group number two, we have the number 22, which is my personal power number. However, this is not the group that it is that I pulled. This is not the group that it is that I pulled, but that's fine. This is the group that you pulled, which is important and significant. Um, the first thing that's standing out to me while looking at this card is there's a lot going on in this imagery, and for some reason, I'm drawn to looking at this I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty non-noticeable, but it's, I, I don't know why, but it's patterns. That's what just came through. It's patterns, things that you might not see or that you're not seeing. That spirit is, um, I don't want to say calling you to notice, but is almost telling me to tell you that they have noticed it, that the divine has noticed it. When I hear the word patterns, I'm getting a sense that there are, it almost gives me Wheel of Fortune vibes where there's certain things that happen in, according to, in, in accordance to divine law and divine order, but from your perspective, you might not be able to see it, and that's why there's a release of emotion. Even, this, even though this card is the card of communication, I'm getting a sense of I need to release um, I don't really like using this word right now because I feel like the spiritual community has overused it and abused it, but the word is surrender. I really need to surrender. And when I say that to you, for those of you guys that picked pile number two, um, I feel like you're locked in on something. You want to see something, you want to hear something, and spirit is like, it's not that we haven't heard you, it's not that it's not going to happen, we just need you to surrender. We need you to relax. Um, these are things that this is like, I don't know why, but it's patterns. It's almost like coding. That is what I'm seeing where 
um, spirit, the divine, has like an oh, like um, a formula for how things are meant to be, and you can't fight against that. You have to trust it. Um, the word is suppress. It's almost as if you've been suppressing certain things about yourself or certain feelings. Maybe that's why you chose the communication card is because you feel like something is being held from you or you are suppressing certain energy, certain things that you're numbing yourself to or you're afraid to, um, I don't know. Actually, nope. Spirit just told me to be quiet and to keep going. So that's exactly what I'll do. The one thing that I will get say is that I'm getting angelic energy here. It feels as though you guys are waiting for a sign or waiting for a signal or waiting for, I, I guess, some type of communication. Obviously, that's what this card is all about. But I'm, the biggest thing that I'm seeing from this is patterns and easing in, like surrendering, to not fight, 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 push against. Wow. Okay, so the next card that I pulled for you is Flow. And I'm not getting a whole lot from this. Oh, yes, I am. The word just came through is surrender. When we allow energy and things to, to just bleed and to flow and to move without us manipulating it, you would be surprised what will blossom, what will bloom within our lives. The next card for you is the past. So as I'm looking at this, there might be a connection, something that is from the past that is bothering you, or something from the past is influenced and bleeding into the current present. And... I'm getting a sense that spirit doesn't want that to impact your future. I'm not sure what that's about. So I'm going to, okay, my loves. So the next cards that I'm pulling for you are the Empress card. I also have Queen of Pentacles and I also have Knight of Cups. Something about this Knight of Cups as I'm looking at it, there's obviously Knight of Cups is connected to emotion, but this doesn't feel like emotion that feels constructive. It feels a, a, a heavy heart, a bleeding heart. A heart that is suffering. It's something that's latching onto you. I'm also looking at this starfish at the very base. But the thing is, there's regeneration. Starfish is connected to regeneration. When once the one thing is cut off, it grows back brand new and usually stronger. And it helps you to evolve. I feel like there's certain things that you have to let go of in the past. Certain things that have been cut from you. Certain things that have been re released from you. Um, and you have to allow that space to grow. I mean, you have the card here. When I was looking at this card, it's about patterns and it's about things that need time. That universe is working, the divine is working in order over your life. Um, and I'm seeing this person suffering, this angel suffering, this person suffering. Um, it's interesting that I said angel again because I'm not sure that this goddess is an angel, but that's how I see her. And then this card, Flow. This is so Empress energy. This is about going with the flow. This is about being able to receive. This is about anything that, any cycle that is that is cut from you, any cycle that is released, surrender to it. Because there's going to be a new birth. There's going to be new life. And it's going to be solid. Um, I am definitely getting a sense of um, energy from the past. You really kind of want to let go of it. You want to surrender it. That's literally what I, what I said in the very beginning is a surrender it because even with the Queen of Pentacles, it's so interesting that the Queen of Pentacles here is in the water, even though this is the mermaid mer, the mermaid tarot. She's in the water, but I'm getting a sense that anything that was lost, like this little starfish at the very root, anything that was cut from you, she the universe brings it up from the bottom of the oceans. From the bottom of the ocean says that this is because of, and it's not because of the fact that you let go and surrender, the universe was going to give it to you regardless. God, the divine was going to give it to you regardless, but you just had to trust. You had to allow yourself to flow, to be protected, to be held, to be nourished, and to nourish others, so to speak. Um, even as I'm looking at this, it reminds me again of divine order, the star over the empress's head. She's about to give birth, but everything comes in direct alignment. I'm also seeing that you are about to receive in your romantic, your, your romantic life. Um, you're really about to receive newness. You're really about to give birth to a brand new, solid, stable, romantic compassionate, considerate relationship, but I'm really getting the sense that you want to flow. For some of you guys, I'm bringing right back to you this orig original message of communication. You might actually be hearing from someone from the past. If this is truly the case, it would be interesting to see their energy because they might be totally 
brand new. They they might be bringing in um, a new a new wave of themselves, like a totally new. And it's up to you to decide if you want to accept this energy or not. The thing was, the thing is with the Empress is that when I see her, I'm very protective of her energy because she is a queen. She is a goddess, and she doesn't just accept and surrender to anything or anyone because that would make her vulnerable in a way that is destructive to her and anything that she will create, anything that is that she will do. So, but I, I'm really getting a sense that there, when you, when your vibration lifts up, when your vibration is attracted, you will. At the same time that you are about to attract the love of your life or this new new energy, this new positive, solid, stable relationship or take your relationship to a deeper level, you will also attract not only that, but you will attract lower vibrations or certain people who come in and, you know, I don't want to say try to impact that, but try to gain from it once again. So it's up to you to decide. Aging. This card shows me that there might be a space right now where you're emotionally feeling like your time is up. And that brings me right back to what it was that I was saying in the beginning, that there's this process. There's this um, divine order of things, these patterns that need to, and it's not you. This is just patterns in the universe. So it could, it almost reminds me of a astrological timing that when this happens, that's when you meet the love of your life. So I would be really interested in, in looking at your chart and seeing what the timing and the cycles of your life are because it shows me timing. It shows me divine order. And I always look to that in with astrology. Let your inner beauty shine. This is the pink rose. And we also have family harmony. So for those of you guys that picked this card, you're you're probably thinking about children or manifesting a family, manifesting um, like fertility. Very if it's not if it's not children that you want, it's a very fertile, loving, nurturing, romantic, sweet romance, love. Um, I do see this for you. You have so much feminine, soft energy here with the Queen of Pentacles, the Empress, the Knight of Cups. It's very balanced. So I'm, I'm loving this for you. This could be the one and rigid. So this is this is so funny. I want to start off with this with rigid. This card is when things are locked up. But the thing is, is that sometimes this. Remember when I said in the very beginning, surrender. No matter, no matter how stubborn you are, no matter how stubborn the circumstance, Mother Nature will always prevail. This reminds me of walls that try to contain water. If a flood comes, there's no amount of walls, concrete, stone, cement that can stop water from flowing. Water is going to do what it is that it's going to do regardless of how much you try to hold it. But you might be met with some resistance. The same thing is true with the person, the place, the thing that is for you. Spirit says that this is the one. You are in a space right now of like fertilely growing this. It's it's like something was getting regenerated. This really could be a relationship from the past that comes back and is stronger than ever. Or this could be you being regenerated and attracting better for yourself. But in order to do that, I'm also getting timing. There's like a certain sequence of timing that had to happen or time had to play play out with especially with the aging card here to help something someone to grow to evolve to be in a, in a space where they're so open and okay with letting their love shine with letting themselves communicate they may have been the right person but they may not have been it might not have been the right timing same with you so this says that when you allow this energy to flow and when you allow yourself to receive when you allow yourself to stop being locked up you will mirror that that energy out to the rest of the world and you will attract someone who is also easily and effortlessly, effortlessly flowing or let's say your relationship has been really locked up and rigid and stubbornly not moving well something from that relation that part of your relationship from your past is cut off and it regenerates and is able to be new but this could be the time this could be the moment this could be the person this could be the situation that is stronger, that is more successful, that's more abundant, that's more loving. So that's why I'm getting a sense of suffering that it's because of the issues of the past that 
you know, it's like a, a astrological timing on both party for both parties, astrological timing, which is they have evolved, you have evolved and you guys come together better than ever. And I'm seeing, you know, family, like family, the family unit starts to strengthen. Or if you are young and you're not working on building a family or old and you have no intention of building a family, it's just union together that feels like this is where I belong. This is right. The timing is right now. So that's what it is I'm saying. That that's what I'm feeling is to put the past behind you because this right here, right now, if you pull this card, it's literally dropped in your hand right now. And spirit says, don't mourn from what has been lost, from what has been taken from you because we were prepared to give you abundance blessing. Anyways, you're the empress at the end of the day. Anyways, everyone sees your worth and your value, but we just wanted it all to flow together. We wanted it to be effortless. You might have to have a really interesting conversation with someone too. So you'll have to let me know down in the comments. I love that for whoever, whoever picked that card number two. Okay. So let me move on to group number three. Okay. And this is the card secrets. Ruled by the number 39, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 breaks down into three. Interesting. I'm not getting anything from this card. Even as I'm looking at the stars, um, my logical brain looks at, sees astrology, but um, I'm actually, no, nothing's really standing out to me here. Okay, judgment. I feel like the reason why I feel like nothing is standing out to me with this card, I'm not receiving any more, um, I'm not hearing anything from spirit, is because this card speaks for itself. Um, judgment. Three of Swords. Four of Wands. The Death card. Um, I'm not getting anything from these cards yet, but they are making a lot of sense to me as I'm moving forward. I know that for some of you guys that picked this card, you're probably like, oh my god, Jess, this is going to be so bad. I'm getting a sense that this is actually a brilliant, beautiful reading already. I'm really getting a lot of good vibes from this, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Unrequited love. Even with this card, unrequited love. It's very good. Release your ex. We have vision, and we have you are a spiritual teacher, and we also have laughter, cleanse your energy, and despair. So for those of you guys that chose this card, I want to say on behalf of the universe that for spiritual teachers... And for those of you guys who have been, are being taught a lot, um, you have walked into this life with a lot of past life situations. All of those past lives energies has brought you, has been poured into this life. No matter where you're at in your journey, meaning no matter how old you are, I feel as though you have been through certain relationships and it started from the moment that you were born. You were probably born into a very tumultuous environment or maybe you lost a parent or maybe there was some major suffering or maybe you were born in an environment that was not conducive to a thriving human being where love and relationships just kind of flowed. And this is not because of anything that you have done. It has everything to do with past life karma and past life karmic baggage that you were called to sort out in the very beginning of your life. I am getting a sense, my love, that, and I'm, as I'm sitting here, I'm feeling like I have to ground myself and center myself. So spiritual, this group is so spiritually evolved but has also, I don't want to say spiritually suffered, but has emotionally suffered and energetically suffered by the lessons that they have experienced in this life. This is not without purpose. And spirit is, I, for me personally, as your friend, <laughs> as Jess, if we're sitting, I would say to you, yo, I'm sorry that you experienced this in this life. I'm sorry that the past lives poured into your current life. Because the suffering is unreal for, and it seems unfair that you would have to unpack it. But spirit says, I'm not going, like I am hearing this. Um, spirit is not going to apologize for the journey because that journey 
gives you the best reward. Now, as I'm saying that, Spirit doesn't is not also saying for you that in order for you to attain true love and true awakening and true you know goodness in your life that you should suffer first. That's not the case, and they don't. Spirit does not want you to have that that be your lesson. Spirit says that you really had to, for whatever reason, everyone is different. Everyone's journey is different and everyone's lessons are different, but you had to experience and you had to sort out the energy of your past lives. You had to be the one to do it because you were the only one that would able be able to do it. The reason why it was passed on to you and it fell on your lap in, in this life is because you were the only one who was strong enough, who was capable enough, and in an environment where you could have a spiritual teacher or spiritual messages that are given to you to help you to process it. Even the fact that you're listening to me now shows you that spirit is supporting you, that your ancestors or the, the lives before you, that you have lived before you, would not they would not, they would not have had it. They might have actually succumbed to the baggage. That might have actually been what took them out of their life and passed on that energy is the fact that what they were dealing with and then in this life, you are processing it, you're dissecting it, you're digesting it, and you're releasing certain things. It almost feels like you have energetically like vomited it up like in order to just cleanse it, to cleanse it, to cleanse it. So that, as I'm looking at this, you have the death card here, and do you see how these little angel beings are, are saving these creatures? All of those creatures um, are literally your past lives or your past experiences. You have cleansed your energy. You're in a space right now where you are cleansing, and like these are all of these all of these people are past lives, past circumstances that you are releasing that you are mourning that's why things have been so heavy for you even if you've had love true love you might in this life you might have experienced some things that just create so much suffering that are so out of your control but it's it's like just how that energy manifests itself that you end up crying like you need to cry it out so the universe gives you something to cry for um, so it feels like you're being punished and that your life is tragic, but in reality, it's the biggest blessing because you are healing and closing chapters. And Spirit says, I feel like this is why this card Secrets is here, is because there's these secrets that your past lives, your ancestors could not speak of, and it has been your job that you are burning it, you're releasing it, you're surrendering it. And with that, you are reborn. With that, you are a prop, like you receive a vision. You receive clarity. And they see you. They see all of what you have done. And for that, you will receive, this is family support. Because you have supported them without you even realizing it, that your issues and your baggage has actually been their baggage, which is kind of materializing and manifesting in this life. They see that because of her, because of him, because of their ability to cry our tears and speak our words and to process our burden, we will support this person and give them everything. This is the best reading. I know it seems so bad, but sometimes spirit wants to recognize you. Sometimes spirit really wants to spend more time recognizing your, your journey than anything. Look, Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords was the first thing. I'm getting a sense, it's not that it's not done yet. I want to kind of put this away because even with laughter card here, it's not that this energy is not done yet. Um, it's just there's another layer to this. That's why I feel like Spirit was really quiet with me just now. Um, oh my gosh, see? You have the Death card again. And you have two of swords. So it feels like things are really kind of like locked in right now. But you're, things are trans, transforming. The what just came through is six months. Six months time. Um, six months time is, the, is what I feel is the completion of this entire cycle. It's not something that you want to speed through. It's something, yes, six months it's going to be done. Woo! Yes! Yes! Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so <laughs> for those of you guys, for those of you guys that picked pile number three, you needed this message, okay? This is more than just romantic love. This is life, also. Um, in six months' time, this is not something that you want to rush forward with, okay? We have the chariot card reversed, and we also have eight of wands reversed, and then finally, 
the, the fool card. Finally, it's cut. Finally, it's done. Finally, it's released. The thing is, is that you don't want to rush through this process because it is painful. And I, I'm really getting a sense that your past lives and your past ancestors, they will have a say. They will speak and put their two cents in. They say, you know, you help this person, you help that person, meaning like past lives, certain situations. It's going to take, the fact that it's six months is wild because for so many of you guys, you've been doing this your entire life. Um, but I'm getting a sense that the cycle ends, complete, completes in six months time from now. And I'm getting a sense of total, total dawn, total freshness, total new energy. Man, the magician card just came out. It's totally stepping into your power, totally the actual material manifestation of things that you've been wanting. That if, I'm also getting a sense in six months there's going to be a baby. I don't know why that just came through. I'm seeing a birth. For those of you guys that picked this card, I feel this in my spirit. In six months now, you're going to have, like, if you don't have a family already, or if you do have a family, there's a baby. There's a baby that's coming, a baby that is manifested. Spirit is like, just wait, just wait, just wait. There will be the biggest blessing because they all say that you have mourned the loss for them, things that they couldn't do themselves. They were stuck in despair. They probably died because of their despair, but you have a lot of support. In six months, it's going to be like laughter, joy. If you are working on career or marriage, six months, it, you have to believe three of clubs, celebration, also children. Do you see? This group, I have chills. I have chills. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have chills all over my body. This group is really about to manifest the biggest, biggest blessings, things that look, two of cups, partnership, union, marriage. I also heard contracts. It's not contractual in the sense that it's like, um, it feels like an obligation. It feels like everything, everything from all of the blessings of past lives. I have chills all over my body, you guys. All of the blessings from past lives, like accumulate into this one. But, and it was because you had to really purge, you had to release and, and lay to rest certain things in your past lives. Eight of Pentacles and Knight of Cups were here. Both of these cards were reversed. So I'm feeling the sense of, and you also got Nine of Cups, didn't you? No, I think that was another deck. I think it was deck number two. But you, it's like, you don't want to like speed through this. You really want to take your time. Don't look at the next six months as destructive. Look at it as more observing. Nothing, you shouldn't have anything beat you down or break you down. It's just really allowing the mind to calm itself, allowing the... If you think of people who have had mental health issues or mental breakdowns, it's because of the circumstances around them usually or internally, just it becomes too much. It becomes overwhelming. So if you have an anxiety attack or if you have a break breakdown or if you have depression or a sadness or suffering emotionally, because these cards are sh showing me that it may not even be that you are sick. Like you might have been like, am I going crazy? Is this going to be my, my way forever? It's the fact that you've been processing all of these different emotions, these different experiences in one life, in one life. So it's, it, this six months time just helps you to rest. It allows your brain to rest so that it can be restored so that you can have this new four of wands has is marriage, union, partnership, family. If you have a family, it finally breathes fresh air in. It's like a home that has been you know, dealing with a lot. And then after six months, the windows open up, you have help, you totally clean everything out. It's a total revamp process where the home now fits you. It's the old house gets totally like it was outdated and it gets innovated. Um, and that's what it is I'm seeing in six months. You might even be um, innovating your home or making reservate, renovating, renovating your home. All of it happily ever after. Bye. I love this reading. Happily ever after. Abundance. Family. Children. This card, I'm surprised. I just feel like some of you guys are like in six months, Jess. I don't even have anybody. You will see right now. Rest. Rest. You've been really stressed out. I believe that spirit and your ancestors is they're saying to you right now, like, if we were to give this to you right now, number one, we wouldn't want to put this on your on your spirit. And have you have to sort this out and then take care of this new family, this new husband, this new wife, this new relationship in six months, six months. 
So you can rest until then because, and you also have this card laughter. That's what your home is going to be filled with. Uplift yourself and those around you through laughter. I'm getting such like, you're going to like look at things and like your children are going to make you laugh. Your life is going to make you laugh in a way that's good. Not like you laughing because it's like, damn, of course. Six months, I see it manifesting. You could literally, like, you guys wouldn't even believe this. I've, I'm getting this sense, like, justice card. Justice, you deserve it. You, you like, beyond deserve it. The tower card, it's going to come unexpectedly, but it's also the breaking down of everything. The breaking down of all of those past lives into this life. And then judgment card for you once again. So all of this is reborn. If you don't know anything about judgment card, this is totally like everything that has ever happened up until this point gets called into consideration. And then the trumpet, the Archangel Gabriel, the messenger of God comes through and sounds this trumpet of healing and rebirth and renewal. But this is so deep, you guys. This is so deep. This isn't like, oh, I graduated college and now I'm reborn into this adult. No. This is a person who has succumbed to the spiritual pressure and the spiritual teachings um, of past lives. It's so deep that all of it comes into place now and says, emerge, come to life, and have, have faith, have hope. That love, light, and I see for you guys, it could be six months, you could be engaged. Like, for real. And it, literally, if you're single right now, and you're like, well, I don't have anybody. When you find your person, and you will, because you have all of the cards all over your deck. Like, all over your entire, all over your entire reading. When you find your person, you have also the Nine of Cups here. When you find your person, you just know. So other people in the rest of the world will be like, they're being really impulsive, but both of you guys will know this is my person. This is the person I'm meant to spend the rest of my life with. It's a spark. It's something that is undeniable. So you can meet them and in a month and a half be married. Mark my words. Anyways, so that's my message for number three. So you guys have to keep you guys have to keep me posted. Um, if you're not setting intention for that, maybe you should. But um, that's what it is I'm seeing for you. Moving on to number four. And for those of you guys, number three, I'm putting a blessing on you. Like a blessing. I hope that you receive it. A full blessing. Okay. I don't even know how. How do I move forward after that? How? Okay. Number four. For those of you guys that chose number four. Okay, um, for those of you guys that chose number four, we have the future. With this card, I'm hearing the word clarity. Very clear. I'm also hearing precise, precision, actually. The word is precision. Precision. Razor sharp, precision, and clarity. I'm also hearing, this sounds really weird, um, I'm hearing um, like a chainsaw blade, like um, a circular saw. Wow, that's really specific, but that's what it is I'm hearing. It's like a cut, a clean, precise cut. And I feel like you're building. Okay, look at this, romantic love. Oh, look, I've never noticed this before, but she has a swan behind her. Two swans. Aphrodite. Then we have King of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. Then we have Let Go of Control Issues, Codependency, Past Life Issues, Self Worth, Take Time for Yourself, Time to Decide, and also Empowerment. So the first thing that's standing out to me is the King of Pentacles. This doesn't necessarily have to be a male, although it can be a male. It could be a masculine, a masculine energy. But what I'm seeing from him is that he holds precious to him. Look, the self-worth. He holds the things that are most precious to him very, very close to his heart. Even as I'm seeing this, past life, he holds the things that are closest to him, closest to his heart. He holds them. He knows the value of them. 
Eight of Pentacles says, we see your value and you are working, you see your own value and you're working to build that. You're working to secure it. You're helping, you're working to help it to grow. Something about this is saying that I'm seeing you investing in yourself, especially with self-worth card here. I'm seeing, for some of you guys, this is going to sound really kind of, I don't know, it, 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 I don't want this to sound disappointing or defeating, but it feels like um, a, a relationship that one person's over here and one person's over there. And they, that person is has, they might not want to be there, but they have to focus on what they're doing over here and you're focusing on what you're doing over here. And they're very separate. And especially with codependency here and let go of control issues, there's this space, this message right now of really disconnecting in order to reconnect. I'm seeing for those of you guys that chose this group, it's not that you're not ready, it's just that you have priorities and certain things that you are taking care of right now that might be distracting you from thinking about love. It could be, it definitely has career written all over it. It feels as though someone's work pulled them over here and someone's responsibilities, family responsibilities or whatever, or their work pulled them over here. So now you're in this kind of like limbo phase of trying to make it work. If you are single, I'm getting the space that there's this two energy of both people are very hyper-focused on themselves and what it is that they are attaining to be or what it is that they're working towards. And spirit is like, that is really, I mean, you have the space, the card here of empowerment. This is to empower you, to empower both of you. Even though there's romantic love here, this is confirmation that there is romantic love, but what it is that you're working on right now is truly for the future. So instead of you trying to balance everything and be like, oh, I'm going to spend time on my dating life. Oh, I'm going to spend time on my husband and on my marriage or on my relationship and also work and also family responsibilities and also disinfecting my home, like whatever it is. It's spirit says that it's not that it's not possible for you to do it, but really prioritize right now. It's not to say that this relationship isn't important. It's the fact that this relationship isn't going anywhere. So, but you need to secure your stability. You need to secure your foundation. For some of you guys, this foundation is truly your self-worth, your self-value, where you want to spend time kind of not repairing, but becoming more solid and secure and doing things independently on your own so that you have a lot to contribute to your partnership without them. You know what I mean? So let's say you're working on your job, you're working on your company, you're working on your business, you're working on travel, you're working on cleaning the home or overseeing the building of a home or whatever the case is, that that's what you need to focus on. That's what you're taking time out for. I'm not seeing a whole lot of focus on your romantic life, however, the work that you're putting in secures your romantic life. So, because I'm also seeing that your your partner is doing the same thing. I feel like your partner is definitely doing the same thing. Okay, um, especially with time to decide and take time for yourself. Time is the biggest overarching message of both of those cards. It's like take time for these things to develop. Take time for these things to secure themselves. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like that message is pretty straightforward, and I'm not done yet, but um, empowerment is all about this card, sorry, this card empowerment is your ability to do things for yourself and for others in a way that makes you feel confident in your abilities. Codependency and let go of control issues conflicts that because it says, what are you gripping onto? What are you holding onto? Um, yeah, so um, when it says this card says, when you ask the divine to take over, you get pulled into your own authentic power. It's a force of inner love that wants your wholeness and magnificence. Unfold my true and radiant self. So that's what it is I'm seeing. And also, take time to decide. Two of Pentacles is about juggling and figuring out what works best for you before you just totally allow yourself to um, consume something. It's like putting in all these pieces of the puzzle, like if you're baking a cake, you put in certain ingredients, you do certain things, or you wait, you do things to pass time while the cake bakes before you can eat it. So that's what it is I'm seeing is that you don't want to be putting your hands 
in the cake and being like, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Is this going like, how can I do all these things? Maybe just focus your intention and your attention on putting, getting the right ingredients, build, baking the cake, make, assembling the cake, cooking the cake, icing the cake, letting the cake cool, and then finally eating it because then you'll have a better cake. <laughs> Eight of Wands is energy that really wants to speed forward. It really wants to race to the finish line. It has the potential to do that, but we want to make sure that everybody is contributing. I'm also getting a sense that if you're in a relationship um, or if you're building a relationship right now, you, the work that you're putting in to focus on you building your cake, you're going to be sharing it with your partner. You were the card the group that has romantic love and also the future. <gasps> now that I think about it, do you remember I said you're building something at the very beginning and I heard the chainsaw? Even though you don't take a chainsaw or a circular blade to a cake, that would be weird um, and also very dangerous and very messy, I'm sure. But you're building something. You're building for the future. That makes a lot of sense. You're building for the future. You're, the, the effort that you're putting into building is going to pay off in the future, especially your romantic love. So for now, just take time for yourself. Work on empowerment. Work on what you need. And take your, take your choice. Like Take your time and your decisions. Take your time and your choices. There's no rush. You have the Eight of Wands here that wants to rush, but Eight of Pentacles and Two of Pentacles works with what you have now in order to create a better, firmer, stable, long-lasting relationship, marriage, connection that has longevity. Not that you experience it and you're like, oh, that was nice, but it's like forever, forever. Now, something that's standing out to me that I have to admit is not clear to me is the Ten of Swords and the past life relationship. You might be seeing... These are the two cards. There, there's something about this is not clear to me. It still is not clear, and I feel like it's because I need to shuffle more cards on this. You might be seeing a connection from a past life, or it might be a connection from the past that is still bothering you and burdening you, that you still might be holding on to. Hmm. Yeah, Six of Cups. Six of Cups showed up. Wheel of Fortune, Three of Pentacles. Four of Cups, Ten of Wands, and the Justice card. I'm sorry, Knight of Wands. I'm Knight of Swords, but this card reminds me a lot of Justice. Ten of Wands, Four of Cups, Six of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, and the King of Pentacles. There, oh, you got King of Pentacles twice. So this shows me that there, there really could be King of Pentacles energy around you, but even still, the King of Pentacles focuses a lot on his career and structure and stability and will not depart from that. He will not, he or she will not leave his desk or leave her desk. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> we have the Devil card here and we also have the Ace of Wands. No matter what, it just feels like they're not going to leave their desk. It's almost an addiction. Like you can try to entice them to leave and they're not going to leave. Or maybe they're trying to entice you to leave and you're just not going to leave. Um, your work, wherever it is that they're working on. And I just feel like I just heard time's up. I don't know what that means for group number four, but I heard time's up. I heard I'm not waiting. Or if you don't, if you do hear from them, time's up. The, the end of you waiting for them is here. But if you don't hear from them roughly around the time, especially with Nine of Swords, if you don't hear from them roughly around the time that I'm doing this video or you're watching this video, time's up. You got to move on. Oh, Eight of Cups. You got to move on without them. Wheel of Fortune. The wheel turns. Life moves on. Maybe you have to say goodbye to this past relationship. Um, maybe they're just not interested. Maybe the connection, maybe they don't have what it takes. Maybe they're not, they, they don't have that spark. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to collab with something better. That, because Three of Pentacles is also here saying, we want to contribute. Like, what is this person contributing to their life, to your life? Six of Cups is definitely past life. You have two connections here talking about the past life.
For some of you guys, you're feeling like you're waiting for a soulmate, and the soulmate is not appearing. Spirit says, yeah, you might be waiting for a soulmate. Some of you guys are waiting for an actual appearance of the soulmate, a masculine energy to appear in your life. You're, you want it. You want it now. You want it to be like a bolt of lightning, and Spirit says, on my timing. Spirit definitely is saying very clearly, on my timing. But for then, in the in-between time, I'm getting a sense that you need to focus on securing your, your stability, your home environment, your passion, your passion projects, your work. You have um, Page of Wands, you have Five of Wands, you have Four of Wands. This is putting your energy into securing the stable, stable energy that it is that you deserve and that it is that you want for yourself. Okay? So that's what it is I'm seeing for you guys. Group number four. I hope that that makes sense. If you do have true love, absolutely. You have romantic love. That That's what popped up for you. But I'm just seeing like you might have to, you know, say goodbye to someone from the past. Okay? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!